Hey, Paul Akers here. I'm in Japan with Norman Bodak and Noriko Bodak. And you know, Noriko's Japanese, and they spent so much time in Japan. They have so many great stories. When Noriko was translating for Ono and for Shigeo Shingo. But one of my favorite stories is the one she just told me. So I want you to tell the story about the Quality Conference in the United States. I told you once, and you know the story very well. You want me to tell it? Yes, of course. Oh, okay. Well, this is a great story. So there's a Quality Conference in the United States. And they asked all the different nationalities there, what is the definition of quality? And when they asked the French, they said sipping wine leisurely at dinner time. When they asked the Germans, the Germans said creating manual and having great documentation on the way a process should be followed. When they asked the Americans, the Americans said throw out the old and innovate and create something new. But when they asked the Japanese, this is the incredible one, they said a bonsai tree, very precisely trimming it. Attention to detail. Is that about how it went? Yes, Paul, you did great. Did I do precisely. it precisely? Yes. All right, good. Well, I love Japan and I love your stories. Thank you, Noriko. Thank you. I just want to add, one of the real powers of Japan is their incessant focus on quality. In every possible way, they focus on quality. And their ability to replicate it all over Japan. I mean, I love, as an example, a uh, strawberry shortcake. I just love it. I can go to any city in Japan and I can get that great strawberry shortcake because they replicate it. They're consistent. They're consistent in what they do. Uncle Shingo comes to Toronto to speak at my conference and he wants to, he wants to go to a specific Chinese restaurant. And I say to Shingo, look, the restaurant is about 20 minutes away and it's late at night today and the same chain has one right next to our hotel. And Shingo says, no, the other restaurant has a different chef. I want to go to the restaurant with the other chef. Shingo was that precise. He was amazing. We're talking about Shingo and we're talking about Ono. And I asked you, what did you think about Shingo? What did you think about Ono? And you said, Ono gave you what? I asked Ono, how did you learn just in time? He said, he laughed. He said, I learned it from Henry Ford. I read his book today and tomorrow. I came back from Japan. I found the book published by Doubleday. I got the rights to reprint it. I reprinted it. It cost me next to nothing to print it. And I sold a million dollars worth of that book within the coming year. Ono gave me a million dollar gift. He would look at a worker, a manager, and he would say, you have 10 people working for you. Do it with seven. He didn't know if they could do it with seven. He, he just he, challenged he, he, never, he just challenged people. He didn't know, and he never told them how to do it. Never told them how to do and it. And the same thing with Shingo. Shingo never gave the answer. Well, Shingo was an educator, so he had to teach certain principles that were different. But Shingo would focus on valuating, non-valuating. And he would say to the engineers, I want you to improve the value-adding ratio. And then he would ask them how to do it. He wouldn't tell them how to do it. He would ask them how to do okay. it. And these engineers came up with incredible ideas. Okay, Norman, so your beautiful wife translated for both Shingo and Ono. What's your favorite memory of Shigeo Shingo, Noriko? <laughs> What's your favorite memory? Memory that he would go to the company and then the company will prepare the plan tour. But he will say, I know the plan take me to your program area and then focus on the machine and then gather people around and then start working. So Make show me the problems. Shingo comes to speak in Canada and uh, he had some trouble coming into America. This was very funny. So Noriko was guiding him and Noriko called me, what am I going to do? He's going to be General Motors the next day. I said, I'll call the White House. He was assistant to the president, but I couldn't get him. So then I called the head of immigration in Washington. I couldn't get him, but I spoke to the secretary. Then I called back and said, Noriko, give me, give me the customs agent. He gets on the phone. I said, this man is so important to America and you're not letting him in. I said, I just called the White House. I just called your boss on top of immigration. And then he says, am I in trouble? I said, if you don't get that man to America in the next 10 minutes, I wouldn't want to be in your position. And Shingo got into America. <laughs> okay, Paul Ager said to me not too long ago that only 2% of American companies are doing lean. Why? It's very simple. Ono identified what their major problems were in making cars. 
he, they had no cash at Toyota. They couldn't even get a loan from the bank. He looked at the inventory and says, that's where our cash is. So he focused on eliminating the inventory and he came up with seven waves, which is wonderful. Now, everybody in the world is doing lean, but why aren't they getting lean? Because they haven't redefined what their problems are and they haven't come up with the way specifically for their problem. The hospitals, in the example, are killing 450,000 people every year in America. So that's and, their waste. And they're looking the same waste that Toyota set up <laughs> to make cars. Excellent. So it's not just the seven waste. It's the waste that's specific to what your organization is producing. That's what you got to do. You identify your main strategic problems, and then you come up with the solutions to eliminate those problems. And you might call them waste, and then you go after those waste. What are we doing to kill so people? So here's the bottom line. Your waste is not Toyota's waste. Yes, absolutely. There. I have Daikon. It's so different here. What's the goal at 100? What's the goal at 100? Have fun. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs>